Hey developers, if you clicked on this video, then you're probably wondering, can I use a MacBook Air for coding? And in this video, we're going to talk about whether you can use your MacBook for coding and my personal experience of using a MacBook Air for coding. So let's get into it. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the performance of a MacBook Air. And the thing is with the performance of MacBook Air, it's, it's really, really good. And sometimes I think that a lot of other YouTube videos or marketing material out there really tries to position the MacBook Pro as the only device you need to be buying if you want to be doing work. And I don't think that is necessarily the case. I think if you're making small prototypes or not even small prototypes to be honest, if you're making big applications but not enterprise level applications, you can absolutely do it on a MacBook. Especially mobile app development, it performs and works really good. I make all my apps on my MacBook Air and it's great and it works really well. The performance is really good. If I am testing a simulator of something like an iPad Pro, then it does tend to struggle. So I would say that when it comes to testing, maybe you should test on some real devices for better performance and better compatibility check. Also, you have things like VS Code and Xcode, which work really well on a MacBook Air. With Xcode, if you have an M-series MacBook Air, and to be specific, these are the only MacBook Airs I'll be talking about in this video, you get the Apple Intelligent Autocomplete in Xcode, which is, again, really good. It works offline, and it's okay. It's not as good as something like ChatGPT or GitHub Codepilot, but because it works offline, it does help you out in some of those scenarios where you don't have internet. So it is good for those scenarios. It is just an autocomplete thing. It's not something that you can ask it a question and it helps you write the code. Also, the size and weight of a MacBook Air is just so convenient. It's really easy to take anywhere with you. So you can be coding absolutely anywhere on a plane, on a train, on your commute. So for people who are trying to build a mobile app as well as do a full-time job and they're trying to build something on the side and a macbook air is absolutely amazing for that and i'd probably recommend the 15 inch one just because you get that extra bit of performance out of it and extra screen size and you don't sacrifice that much room or weight and also price when it comes to price i think the macbook air is actually really competitively priced it is expensive but if you compare it to a similarly priced laptop on the windows side i don't think you're getting similar performance on windows you're getting something worse in terms of performance the only place where i think maybe performance is slightly better on windows is gaming but again I don't think you should be buying a MacBook Air for gaming at all, or even a Mac for that for that matter. You can play games on a Mac, but really you're better off with a Windows device or a console. And when it comes to storage RAM and screen size, then it can be a little bit limited. So I would recommend going for that higher storage, higher RAM, and the highest screen size, the 15 inch, if you can. I personally am currently using the base model of an m2 macbook air and the storage is definitely my biggest blocker at the moment it's getting towards that part where i probably need to upgrade my storage because i'm running out of room so i definitely think you need at least half a terabyte to a terabyte nothing less than that and when it comes to ram i definitely would say going for that 16 gig is very good and the other thing is, especially if you're running Docker, if you're running Docker, then you definitely want that extra RAM. So if you have a lot of containers running in your Docker instances, then you're going to need that extra bit of RAM. Some other benefits of the MacBook Air are how easy it is to use. It just always works. It's got insane battery life. It works really well. The ecosystem is great. If you're a web developer, you can actually debug your Safari iPad, the Safari on your iPad from your Mac, which is pretty crazy. Uh, and the same for your iPhone. So you can debug different devices from your Mac. If you have an iPad, then you can use the extra screen estate there for other things. It's just really good. And when it comes to mobile app development as well, it makes it so easy 
to develop for all the different devices in the Apple ecosystem. Time to deploy is also really good. It's really quick to make an app, send it to iTunes Connect and get it on the App Store. It's really quick. And the only thing that might take you a bit of time is the actual approval process, which is done by an actual human. So it can take at least a day. So I have had scenarios where they've done it quicker than a day, but not often. Normally it's at least a day. And that is actually a problem for a lot of developers, but writing the code and getting that code onto deployability is really, really quick. And also that it has a large user base. There's a lot of people using Macs, using iPads, using iPhones. So it makes it really a good place to be writing software because you have support from other developers. If you have questions, you have support for from people wanting to use your software. So if you make something that is useful, then there's a large user base that might want to use it already. And it's, it's really good. The only negative I would say is that there is a large user base, but that user base is primarily concentrated in North America, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, sort of the places. If you start looking at Asia, Africa, and South America, then, you know, there are many people using uh, Apple devices. In those scenarios, if you're making something specific for those markets, then I wouldn't recommend the Mac necessarily um, or something that's more uh, largely used in those markets. So where would I not recommend the MacBook Air? It's in the very, very large, the ones that, you know, teams of developers are working on with lots of Docker instances um, and large bases. The reason for that is it, you might start hitting performance issues like uh, RAM and especially if you have a lot of Docker instances. And the other place where I would say is maybe game development. Game would be very difficult on a Mac book Air, just purely because of, you know, this graphics card and the graphics in the Mac book Air are quite limited uh, compared to that side. Also working with uh, large languages as well would be difficult. Uh, on a for the same reasons and any programming languages that may not work as well on a macbook air something like c sharp c sharp does work on a macbook air since uh, microsoft made it open source and made it work on uh, mac linux windows but you don't have visual studio and that's probably the best place to be writing c sharp code so my final thoughts overall for the price i think a macbook air is the perfect device for any developer looking to create something on the side, especially if they have a full-time job and they're trying to squeeze out um, time here and there to make something. I think the MacBook Air is perfect for those scenarios and it will definitely be able to do that flawlessly. It's in the very large and gaming projects that I would say you shouldn't use a MacBook Air, but overall MacBook Air is a really good place to start coding and also make your next mobile app or uh, web app. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, then I'd love it if you can leave a like and subscribe. It will really help me out. And if you did enjoy this video, then maybe you should check this one out. I'll see you in the next one.